this is the end of July and I'm starting to see fruit on my jujube also got a volunteer tomato plant at the base of it I'm not sure how that got there but I, I guess if you compost your tomatoes that's what's gonna happen check out the fruit here the little tiny ones right now but at least they're abundant All right, let's see what it looks like next month. So the jujubes are getting really close and getting ripened. This is the Li. It could be the Lang. But uh, they put on a lot of size. This is from a relatively small tree. This is only about five feet five-ish. Just check out the uh, the other one, and then this is the Lee. Yeah, it's weird, you know. Here in Washington, they grow kind of as a single stalk, and very little side branching, and then the side branches kind of die off during the winter time. But they do survive out here in the wild of Seattle. <laughs> So I finally got to do a video on a ripe jujube um, here in Washington. These are great trees and fruit to be planting here. I love them. Um, it's an Asian fruit, kind of reminiscent of an apple. Um, but when it's super, super ripe and dry, it looks like a date. It tastes almost like a date though. Um, so I have two varieties, a Li and a Lang. And, um, it is towards the end of September here, and these are ripened. You know they're ripened when they turn a little brown. So I've got some brown ones. I've got some larger ones that are not brown. i pick those later. And i got some that um, just kind of fall off really easily. Mm. The, the cool thing about jujubes, the longer you chew it, the sweeter it gets. Here's another tree. And these grow really interesting here. They don't get into a tree form. They just stay kind of a stock and then they grow out these new branches every year. So, at least in Washington, you can't really eat this. For whatever reason, these just didn't make it really dry. Um, for, yeah, for whatever reason in Washington, they just, they just don't grow into tree form. So... At least with that information, you could put it into a tight corner and not worry they don't get too big. Uh, the only thing to watch out for with jujubes is that they are very prolific suckers. They'll throw a sucker out like 100 feet away. <laughs> um, I haven't seen it yet, but you definitely don't want to grow this too close to the house because the roots can get entangled with piping or whatever foundation, and um, you don't want that. So... It's another cool tree to grow here in Washington. A lot of people don't know about it. Um, and it tastes delicious. I love this. So these aren't quite ripe yet. So I have a Lee and a Lang. I don't know which one is which, to be honest with you. Because uh, I think I lost the tag on these. But uh, there's a tag on the other one. Let's see. Well, actually, uh, here it is. Mm -hmm. This one is a Lee. Okay. That's a Lee. And that makes the other one a length. Something like this you could pick. Yeah, about this size. Puts on a little brown color. Good to go. Chew on that for a while. Love it. Delicious. Hmm. Um, these trees are pretty drought tolerant. So if you don't water it and just kind of let the season take care of it naturally, They'll do just fine. Oh, anyways. Here is, uh, oh, my Rubinets. You know, this is what happens when you don't thin out your apples. They stay really tiny. But these guys are delicious, even just like this. 
This isn't the most disease resistant tree, but um, it's a tasty tree. I'm gonna pick a couple of these, bring them inside. It's a perfect size for Blake. He loves apples and he'll eat the whole thing himself. All right, let's just get a couple. Come on. There you go. And just three to chew on. So I've got my greenhouse project happening over here. Still trying to set up the uh, the base of that and flatten out the land. Uh, it's just been real busy, so I haven't had too much time to get it all set up. But hopefully, I can get it done before winter. Either uh, if I don't, that just means I'll have to hire somebody to do it. All right, guys, that was. Really quick update on just the jujubes with a bonus on the apples. This is the Rubinette. It's a good looking apple. Actually, it's not a good looking apple. It's kind of an ugly looking apple. It's a good tasting apple. The Rubinette is actually related to the Orange Cox Pippin, which is a pretty famous apple uh, for its flavor. Let's try this out for you guys. Hmm. Pretty tasty. However, it's been raining a lot. And uh, you can definitely taste that there's a high amount of water content in these apples. So the concentration. So the flavor has been diluted a little bit because of all the rain. And you, these apples are usually very, very good. Second year in ground. Um, next year I'll do a better job of thinning out the tree so that I can get larger apples. But uh, you know, it's trial and error as you go, I guess. Reuben and Apple. So I'm gonna pick a few more of these uh, these Lang Jujubees, bring inside and eat it. But I want to show you something real cool. So I used some uh, soil that had papaya seeds in it, and it's been growing in this pot with this small apple tree. Isn't that cool? Definitely have to repot those and bring it inside if I want them to do any better. I probably will because I do have a male tree, and uh, I need to get a female tree if I actually want fruit. Alright guys, thanks for watching, bye bye.